Good. Good morning, everybody. As we load on and let everybody join us, uh, we're really excited today about our first ever, ever virtual sales summit um, throughout the company. We have over 7,000 agents, employees, loan officers joining us this morning. So we're just going to give everybody a couple more minutes and then away we'll go. So just give us a, a few more minutes and let everybody join on. Say hello to everyone out there. Um, and, it, and it's great to be with you today. All right, and we're gonna, we're gonna get started. We know some people will be joining us a little bit later. But again, hi, I'm Hobie Hanna uh, of Howard Hanna Real Estate. If I haven't met you, it's nice to meet you. We've got so many new faces joining us today and so many new members of the, of the Howard Hanna Holdings uh, Company. So it's great to be here. I'm really excited to welcome everyone from all points north and south that are part of the family, including all of our commercial agents, loan officers, employees, members of the Tate family, franchise groups, and today for our first meeting, uh, really to welcome everybody from Howard Hanna Rand, our newest, uh, our newest partnership that, that is in the uh, downstate region of New York and makes us the largest real estate company, number one in all of New York State, which is an impressive, impressive uh, accomplishment for the entire company. We're excited today to be with all of you to celebrate the success that you've had this year. Um, and, and, and just to drive home that fourth, fourth quarter with many messages. But before we get started, and you might be in some small group meetings at different sales offices, uh, you might be in front of your home computer, some of you might still be in your pajamas um, uh, watching this today, but stand up, stretch a little bit, and give yourself a round of applause for the incredible effort that you've given this entire company and all your clients and customers in 2020. So hopefully everybody's getting moving a little bit, giving yourself that round of applause. I applaud all of you. Um, the other thing we'd like everybody to do today is there now at this company of yours, there are 12,000 sales associates and employees representing the brands every day and servicing the customers to the highest degree of service. In fact, it, Tate, we've always had the red penguin, and at Hannah now we've had the green penguin, we, we stole that from the Tate side, uh, to offer that great customer service and experience and maximize the value propositions that we have. And no other year than 2020 have so many of you been green penguins every day. You've had to be a green or red penguin to simply just exist in 2020. And the efforts you've had just uh, make me so proud to be part of your organization. Today, we hope to be energizing and informative. We really hope that you come away from today with a little bit of motivation, a little bit of taking your mind off of the crazy, hectic market, and really reinforcing some of the value propositions that you all know with some information that might help you list and sell more homes. This is our first ever real technology summit. Annually, we have a summit at this time of year in October throughout the markets. Um, and at Tate, this would be the year we'd also have their big, their big convention event. But instead, we brought everybody together and we're trying to have fun, education, and we wish we all could be there with you, obviously, at all these different summits. In fact, if you pre-registered, you would have received a little gift from the Hanna family, uh, which are just Hershey hugs. Uh, not kisses, but hugs, uh, because we wish we were with everybody, just everybody giving each other hugs and celebrating the success of the year. Um, I had to explain that to my kids last night, that these are hugs, not kisses, which means it's chocolate, uh, white chocolate and dark chocolate mixed together. So perfect. Um, but we want to just celebrate the hard work, what everybody has done. Because who would have thought that this market would be so strong if we look back at March? Who would have thought that the sales numbers would be up across the board 20% and we'd be having a record year, both in real estate, title, mortgage, insurance, across all the companies? In fact, I want to just take a moment to also thank all the employees at the branches, at marketing, at IT, um, at accounting, uh, the administrative support staff, mortgage, title, insurance, doing all that work behind the scenes that have made this year such a success. I really applaud all of you and thank all of those employees who are here today. Thank you for making Howard Hanna and Alan Tate such special organizations. So today we look to continue this momentum we've had since the end of the second quarter and finish the year strong. You're gonna hear messages of that this year. And I will tell you that as we finish this year strong in this fourth quarter, the biggest challenge we have and that what we need are listings. So you'll see I'm wearing my, if you list it, we will sell it pin. 
that's from an old campaign, but I believe it more than ever. As I reach out to people in my sphere and my friends and everybody out that will listen to me, I tell them now's the time to put your house on the market. We can get you more money than ever before. And we have a, right now, whether you have 100 listings or you have one, if you can increase your inventory by 10% through the course of the end of this year, it isn't only going to finish the year strong, but we're going to go into 2021, which I believe is going to be one of our best years in history, breaking this year. Today, I have to do a shout out, is brought to us. Um, there's a lot of technical things going on here that you don't see behind the scenes, uh, including the gift and other stuff, is brought from our financial service of companies, mortgage, title, and insurance across the, the brands, across the footprint. Let's give them a round of applause and thank everybody from mortgage, title, and insurance for allowing us and supporting us to have this today. With that being said, we're going to jump to the first message of the day that comes directly from Mortgage Title Insurance. So we're going to hear from my brother Duffy and my cousin Annie. Duff and Ann, take it away. Hey, everybody. We've had a record-breaking summer in the midst of the pandemic. I couldn't be more proud of the agents who have continued to refer business to our mortgage and title companies and all of our loan officers and staff working tirelessly to get our customers from application to closing. Did you know that in 2020 alone, the Howard Hanna, Allen Tate, and Rand Realty Mortgage Companies closed over 8,700 mortgages, resulting in over $1.9 billion in sales volume. And our title companies closed nearly 12,000 transactions, resulting in over 2.3 billion in sales volume. These results demonstrate our one team, one dream philosophy. Thank you all for your continued efforts. Hello everyone. I want to congratulate you on a phenomenal year so far. Did you know that year to date, Howard Hanna Insurance, Allen Tate Insurance and Hudson United Insurance have sold over 16,300 policies, resulting in nearly $1.6 billion in volume in terms of referrals, our agents and staff are our best supporters, and we are so thankful for that. Last year, this performance is what led us to be number one in closed homeowners insurance policies in the country, and number three in sold home warranty policies. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Duffy and Annie. And I appreciate, again, everything that our whole family of mortgage title insurance companies do throughout the entire company. So. Um, We've got this whole day planned, a lot of technicality. I will tell you, if, it, if you have friends that are trying to log on, uh, I think we broke Zoom with a number of people. Actually, um, Kate Lasor, who we all know is a, uh, one of our great executive producers around here, she's on the phone with Zoom. Uh, be patient. If you're not on, you'll get there. We extended our account for today, and, and I think we have to extend it even more because so many of you are here. So we're so excited that you're here, but thank you. So uh, we have a great day ahead planned. You're going to learn some things throughout the course of the day, what we're going to call Did You Knows. Um, what I would say is pay attention to them. They have a lot of our market leaders who are going to share some of the value propositions and some great statistics that you haven't heard about some of our different programs. And there may be a little contest after the uh, summit today that comes out to you that you could win some prizes. So, so get excited for that. So without further ado, wouldn't be a uh, kickoff to a summit if we didn't have uh, our fearless leader, Hottie Hannah, to start it off. So um, I'm excited to have my dad join us. Uh, we're going to take it away to my dad now. So dad, uh, kick it off for us. Thank you, Hobie. Thank you very, very much. Good morning and welcome to the Howard Hanna Tate Fall Sales Rally, bringing all of us together. As of yesterday, more than 5,000 colleagues have registered to be with us today to celebrate and plan for the fourth quarter of 2020 and lead us into 2021. At this point, I wanna take a moment to introduce all of the new sales associates and managers who began their new career with us in 2020. Please wave, 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 wave. introduce yourself. Let's, let's everybody see each other. Great to have you with us. Great career opportunities are ahead of each of you. In addition, I would be remiss not to introduce our newest Howard Hanna partner, the Rand Company Realtors, with 28 offices throughout metropolitan New York City and surrounding suburbs and counties in New York and New Jersey. Welcome, Rand, and please wave 
If you're from RAMP, give yourself a big round of applause and stand. Also, I want to introduce Marsha. I see Marsha out there. Dan, where's Dan? Matt and Joe, who you're going to you're gonna meet a little bit later. A big round of applause for the whole family and the RAND company. Now, we look forward to referrals going both, both ways, north, south, east, and midwest from the RAND company back and forth. Since we last met in January and February at the awards events through our, all of our 11 states at Howard Hanna, a lot has happened in America and around the world. In February, with the lowest interest rate to that time, with low unemployment, and a presidential election year coming up. We predicted a boom in our business, in residential real estate, as well as Howard Hanna core businesses of mortgage, title, and insurance. In fact, our closed residential sales rose 11% over 2019 in February and January. On March 11th, I was at a University of Pittsburgh Medical Center board meeting. And we learned from the physicians at 12 noon that the World Health Organization had declared coronavirus 19 international, an international pandemic. From that point on, it changed how all of us would have to work, live, and play as we learned to adjust to a new normal. I'm very proud to say how our Howard Hanna family of companies excelled, excelled in the new normal, making the one team, one dream concept a reality. During the 76 days of quarantine, you, the core of the company, the wonderful super sales associates, rose to the occasion, rose to the occasion. The innovative managers changed styles in the remote world and supported our realtors to stay strong and prepare these support teams in technology, marketing, educational and learning, stepped to new heights and became beacons of support for all of our colleagues. Human resources played a vital, important role with our facilities group, rearranging our neighborhood offices to make them CDC compliant. Management and senior leadership all worked remotely using our great Howard Hanna marketing and technology tools, preparing for what at town hall meeting I called in mid-May, the great real estate invasion of 2020 which occurred on June 5th. Record months in June, July, the best month ever, in new and closed sales in the Howard Hanna 63 years. A super August and a September, the new best month ever in written sales with a volume up 34% and closed sales volume up 26%. A great month of October is upon us in closings. Today, we are number one in the Carolinas, number one in the state of Pennsylvania, and now, number one in New York and Ohio, almost twice the home sales over our closest competitors. Most important, real estate is local. And we are number one in almost 200 counties around the country. In Michigan, Indiana, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, New Jersey. And most important, in the communities of our 325 offices, we dominate in residential sales, homeowner's insurance, purchase money mortgages, and entitled closings. A big round of applause to all of you. Congratulations to all of you for your leadership, pride in performance, and enthusiasm to be the best of the best in the real estate industry. I'll, I'll clap again now. Please all stand and give yourselves a standing ovation. Now, I look forward to the next six months for the momentum, for the momentum to continue and for you to take advantage of all of the, our, your opportunities. Thank you for all you do, and I am proud to be part of your company. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, let's go on with the show of fun, learning, and giveaways. Hobie, are you ready to take over the baton? Um, and uh, we are ready to run with that baton. So uh, thank you very much. And 
we are right now just so everybody knows we are having a little bit of technical difficulty with zoom it's not anything on the hannah side kate lasor is uh is diligently working on that so if you're trying to still log in um it, it's kicking people out of capacity so just hang tight you'll get on um, she's working on it right now also everything today is recorded and so one of the great things is through the education department uh, they'll be able to bring out parts and pieces of today's event or the entire event if you'd like to see it uh, even if you have to cut out because you do have a uh, an appointment a listing a sale or a closing today so we completely understand that so we're really excited to keep moving forward and you're going to see as i mentioned these did you knows and the first one is coming from matt rand president and ceo of the howard hannah rand company so matt take it away Hey everyone, as the newest members of the Howard Hanna family of companies, we're so proud and excited to be part of the leading real estate company in the markets that we serve. We are living proof that there is strength in numbers. Howard Hanna now has over 350 offices and more than 12,000 sales associates and staff across 11 states. We are the number one independently owned real estate company in the country, number one in Pennsylvania, number one in Ohio, number one in the Carolinas, and number one in New York. Howard Hanna is the company that it is because of the contributions of each and every one of you, and we thank you. Thanks, Matt. And well, aren't those impressive statistics? You heard about that, that power of being number one from both my dad and from Matt. Um, and don't forget to use one of our great tools that we launched this summer, which is called Lala Point, which is actually taking those number one stories, that number one market share, and being able to share it with your age, with your customers, your clients, your sphere. So if you haven't been made familiar yet with how to use Lala Point, how you can build your business using that, please talk to your managers this afternoon and they'll share that great data. So here we go. The, the moment everybody's been waiting for, which is Aunt Helen. You, you know something exciting is going to happen. She's been waiting for this day for about five months. Uh, you, ne you never know what Helen's going to say. So, Aunt Helen, take it away and give us that message. Hi, everybody. I am so thrilled to be with you this morning as we celebrate our summit 220. Our summit this year is everywhere. It's not just in your local markets, but this time we're virtual, like everything else we do. You know, it's funny, when we started out this year, our theme was 2020 vision. 2020 vision and what we thought in January is exactly what's happened, even though we had a pandemic. It might have changed, but we predicted our biggest year ever, and we talked about how to get there. But you know, when we were preparing for this summit today, I was thinking about what's missing. What else can we do to help our sales associates but not just the sales associates, every manager, every employee in this company do better. And one of those things is easy money. Easy money is so crazy and it's there for you. It's referrals everywhere that you wanna be. So let's take a look at Hannah Land. Inter office referrals, that's what we call these. So powerful across town, but all through our 11 states with the very best sales associates in the world. That's who are in those 11 states. With the opportunity for you to take leads and give them to somebody of your own caliber, somebody that you can talk to. So to help you do that over the next couple of weeks, as I said in my Monday morning meeting, you're gonna be getting maps. You're gonna be getting maps and you're also gonna be getting lists of office locations. They're all on our website but perhaps we're gonna make it easier for you by also putting them as part of your marketing tools so that you can easily access the people that you know, the people that you wanna to know to build that. But we are in the best places in the country in this wonderful Hanna land. But we're not just there, we're everywhere. And through Leading RE, we can refer anywhere in these United States, everywhere people wanna be. Have you thought about the fact that the people that you buy or sell with each of them, how many other people they're connected with, just they themselves. They don't just buy one house or sell one house. They continue their career. They might buy an investment property from commercial, but they also might buy a home that's bigger, a home that's smaller when they go through their life changes, but their kids, their parents, their relatives, their friends. We know from NAR that 54% of people will take the recommendation of a family, friend, or neighbor those are the people that you have to reach out to. So they're recommending you to help their families if they move to Seattle, 
or they move to Texas, or they move in the heartland of Howard Hanna. We're there for you. But it doesn't stop there because we're local. We are so proud of the fact that we have 350 local offices, more now, I guess, with RAND, but all of these offices there to help people within our local communities, that we service them. We're in the communities, we're active in those communities. But in addition to that, we can also take you anywhere you wanna to go today, anywhere you wanna go because the world is global. Even now, people have family members, have friends that need to be connected in different parts of the world and you can do it like nobody else can. But one of the results of this pandemic is something that we found out that's really amazing. People want more. We know people are buying and selling with us every day because they want more space. They want different space. They want space that filled their needs. But this week I got to listen to a really wonderful speaker that talked about the needs of people for right now. They predicted great, great results for 20 and 21. But they also told us that demand for second homes is even gonna be greater. So we are so fortunate that we sell in the best and most beautiful lakes in America, but we also sell the seashore and we sell the valleys and we see the, sell the ski resorts. We are everywhere you wanna be. So let's look at this now. There's no way that you can read these names on here and neither can I. So let's get real about it. These are some of the hot areas for second homes. And if you look there, there's a lot of seashore stuff, but look how many are in our own markets, second homes for you to service people. But these are your clients now. Don't lose that opportunity to refer them to buy their home somewhere else so that they can escape when they want to, so that they can go out and enjoy the outside because it's gonna be so important in the year to come. So many opportunities and so many ways you're gonna be able to connect with them. You'll be getting social media tools so that you know what to put on social media to get somebody to call you. I'm bragging all this week because I actually spent time and clicked off all the people that wanted to follow me on LinkedIn last week. I couldn't sleep, it was late at night. It's two o'clock in the morning. At 2.30, somebody responded to me saying, I've been meaning to call an agent to sell my mother's house. We listed that house three days later with, by the way, one of the best presentations I've ever been on. Of course, if you can imagine, the agent has to go on a presentation with me. They might have gone over the top for this $140,000 house. But we signed the listing that night. And we're helping them through Hannah Parks to get that house ready to go off to the market and to help an older woman make her dreams reality. You can do that for everybody. And we're going to give you the tools through email, through hard mail, through things that you can reach out to clients with the language and the verbiage to help you build referrals. So what's that mean? What that mean is it's now time for Helen's whim. everybody. Now, in case you thought that was crazy and you're trying to figure out what Helen's whim is, that means you haven't been with us for a number of years. Helen's whim is pretty simple. It's either a way for me to make a fool of myself. Many years ago, I told Hobie when he was a, an Asian starting out, I said, if you can't make a fool of yourself, you'll never be able to lead. So I don't mind making myself look a little bit silly all the time. So welcome to that. But also it is something else. It's something that I just come up with. The reason it's a whim is because it's just an idea that I have. It's my choice what it's about. It's my choice what the gifts are. So let me tell you what's going to happen now. Because I am so convinced that each of you in this company, every employee, every management, every staff, every department head, and every single sales associate can earn extra money between now and the end of the year and well into next year, we're gonna have a little contest based on referrals. This is the simplest contest we've ever done. All you have to do is go online and fill out the referral form in our office, across the country, across the globe, whether it's through Howard Hanna and Alan Tate, or whether it's a global referral, we're gonna give you points for it. One point is one referral. 
You only have to have one referral to win a prize. But before we start, I always think it's a little bit unfair that people have been doing their job all year long, that have done such an incredible job, they don't get recognized. So to kick off the contest, I thought we would salute some of the really big achievers in the referral network of Howard Hanna in this past year, including Tate and Rand. So let's go with the top ones. The first one is this. It is, believe this or not, Janet Lanfrey in our Greenfield office this year to date has already put out 21 referrals, the largest individual number of referrals throughout the year. So Janet, what we have for you is, I believe you have another version of this. So we're delighted to give you the companion piece to the luggage that you won last year. But that's not all because we have lots of other people doing great jobs. Janet Lanfrey did 19, uh, oh, Janet did 21. But combined with that, Heather Herndon did 19 and so did Kyle Recker. So what do we have for you, Heather? We also have the companion piece to this Rowena luggage from last year. So each of you will have two pieces of the green luggage. And Kyle, for you, we thought about what you would like and we think you might like a fire pit this fall so you can enjoy the outside. I don't have a fire pit with me, but we'll be sending you one. So congratulations to you, but that's not it because we also have our highest inter-office referral of the year. 3.5 million goes to Anita Sabatas from um, North Carolina. And Anita, you're going to win a mini iPad. Congratulations to you. So lots of prizes, lots of things coming. So let's not just limit it there. So what I did was I looked from each market that we're in for the outstanding achievements within that market for referrals. And so what I came up with was I talked to all the reload directors, I got the information, one from each state, and right here in this bag, I think this is my bag, don't you think it looks like me? Anyway, in this bag, I have the name. So why don't we just begin? And I'm gonna pull for the prizes that you see in front of me. If you're not familiar with Helen's whim, you also don't know that I love to give purses. And our experience is that you love to receive them. So what we're gonna to give today is, we're gonna be giving Michael Kors and Kate Spade purses. In addition to that, we have some um, earbuds and we have some cash and we have another fire pit. So lots to give away this afternoon. So let's get started. So I'm gonna pull, as you can see, the names are right there. I don't know what order they're in. I'm closing my eyes. I can only pull one at a time. I should have shook them up, I guess. And the winner of this purse is Kelly Galansky from New York. Congratulations, Kelly. Let's put that back here so I don't get myself confused. And next, let's give away another purse. Why don't we? Because we've got a lot of them. So let's give away. That was, that was a Michael Kors, but so is this Michael Kors. Look at this one. I really love this. It's like the perfect size to use for almost everything. And both of those will fit into your normal thing. So let's see who won this one. Wendy Evans is the winner of this. Wendy, congratulations to you. That's great. We're thrilled that you could win a prize with us today. Thank you for all of your effort, Wendy. And next, what do we give next on my list here? Well, let's give away another fire pit. Sandy Sikovic from Commercial has won a fire pit. I have to get rid of the ones that won so I don't mess up. Here's Wendy. All right, next on my list is, how about $200 cash? Anybody like $200 cash? Now notice, see we're so good, it's a Howard Hanna gift card. It comes in this little card right here, but it's real cash. You just don't know it, but it's real cash. $200 and that goes to, we got two commercial in a row. Diana Wisnett from Commercial in Ohio. And Diana had a referral to um, London, by the way, as well as referring herself. That's one of the reasons that she's in here. That was one of the credit points if you referred yourself um, for a staff member. But Diana bought a new house this year and sold her house. So exciting for her. Okay, how about another purse? This time, let's give away this great Kate Spade bag. Sue Rodehaver wins that bag. Congratulations, Sue. Okay, moving on here. What do we have left? Oh, looks like we have more purses left. Well, how about we'll go to a wallet? We just gave a purse. Greta Waltz from Virginia wins the wallet. 
I've got lots of stuff left yet, but I haven't, um, I, do I have more? Oh, I have more names, don't worry. There's more, if you haven't won, you still have a chance today. Kelly Brim from New York. Kelly, you get this purse. Continuing on, let's draw for, should we draw for this big purse now? I think so, because I think it's really great. We're getting down to the end, and so that is Sandy Spector from Goshen Office, and she was she was just added at the very last minute, Sandy, so you got a great Michael Kors bag there to celebrate, and you're not surprised it's green, right? Mm -hmm. And we're down to the end of my drawing names here. Let me sure I make everybody here that I got. And I have given everything away, except it looks like I have not given away yet. Did I give this away? I, no, I didn't. They're telling me. Okay, so this is going to go to Brooke Cranston, who also won today. Now, I seem to have extra gifts, so don't worry. Those extra gifts will go out next week also. I just want to make sure I have everybody that was on my list that should win and to say thank you to all of you. Um, and um, But look what's left and look what's in store. We've got great purses still coming and uh, great gifts. We've got electronics, more fire pits more fun. And so uh, I'll see you in two weeks and you'll never be able to tell what I do. All you have to do is find a referral and put out the form. Thank you. Hello everyone. Did you know that NAR statistics show that more than 90% of home buyers search online and that statistic continues to trend upward? Alan Tate and Howard Hanna combined have over 250,000 client accounts in RealScout. Those buyers completed over 530,000 web sessions and marked over 140,000 properties as homes they were interested in. Keeping your buyers searching on howardhanna.com and allentate.com is more important than ever, and using RealScout is a great way to enhance that experience. The industry-first property comparison feature automatically displays listings side-by-side -side and room-by-room providing an outstanding online search experience for our buyers. There are many things we do not know right now as we face new challenges, but we do know that RealScout is an advantage to our potential buyers and an advantage for us. Hi everyone. One of our most impactful product releases that we've had in years was the release of Engage CRM earlier this year. Engage has allowed you to manage your listings your contacts and automate your workflow in order to help you stay on track to meet all of your sales goals. One of Moxie's latest releases that ties to Engage was Moxie Campaigns, which is a new way for you to automate individual emails or entire email campaigns to your sphere. Did you know that this year alone, between all of our companies across all of our states, we've already sent over 2,200 campaigns and nearly 1.5 million emails through Moxie campaigns alone. So keep an eye out for more campaigns and email options in the coming year. And if you need any help at all, reach out to your manager or marketing to find out more about Engage CRM and Moxie campaigns. Take care, everyone. Hey, everyone. As you know, we always strive to be the listing leader in all of the markets we serve. It's especially exciting that we continue to lead in luxury listings. Did you know that our exclusive partnership with Luxury Portfolio International opens the door to a network of more than 50,000 listings each year, all targeted to high net worth buyers in nine languages and over 60 currencies? So far this year, Howard Hanna, Allen Tate, and Rand Realty have listed 2,648 properties over $650,000. 856 were listed at over a million dollars. Howard Hanna and Alan Tate's listings have all benefited from the added value of luxury portfolios, extensive network and advertising opportunities, and now Rand Realty's listings will as well. Congratulations on another successful year. Okay, so welcome back. And Helen, that's such exciting with the whim and the contest, so I hope everybody realizes, you know, all it takes is a referral in our office, company-wide, uh, internationally, uh, department to department to make, to be eligible for that contest and, and win more of Helen's win.
And thank you to those did you knows, which were all great, including Chris's at the end there about um, homes of distinction and luxury portfolio. In fact, look this week on Friday in the Wall Street Journal, and we're taking over the Wall Street Journal. We have a full page ad uh, in the Wall Street Journal. First time we've really done that to market the luxury $2 million plus homes that we have throughout our whole marketplace. And hopefully something we'll be doing on a more regular basis as part of our partnership with luxury portfolio international. So uh, real quick, just as a housekeeping item, I, I know people are frustrated out there because we're frustrated here as well. And I just want to be clear um, on a couple of things. Kate Lasore and Matt Latchett, our uh, CMO, are working with Zoom. We had actually, in advance of this event, uh, upgraded our Zoom account from a 3,000 account to 12,000 people, um, paid for it in advance, taking care of it, and um, Zoom uh, shut us off at 3,000. Uh, we're working with that right now to figure out why they can't turn us on. Uh, you, if you saw Kate and Matt right now, they're, they're probably more frustrated than some of you and some of your friends who can't get on. So what I'd ask you is just to reach out. We're gonna send an email from the entire company. We'll air this again in its entirety for people to see. Um, and we also, as I said before, are recording everything so we can have little snippets set out. So thank you to everybody who's reached out to me via email or text in the, uh, in the last 20 minutes to make us aware. We are aware and uh, you just, I'm sorry, that's the, the problem of live TV, I guess, and technical difficulty of using an outside vendor. But um, we, we will improve and we will uh, effort to go on. And so we will go on at that with uh, my good friend, Pat Riley, who's gonna share about finishing strong in the fourth quarter. So it's going down to Charlotte. Pat, take it away. Greetings from the Carolinas. I'm asked every day now whether or not the June, July, August, and September halo on our heads will continue to exist. My answer to each of you is yes, it will. But it's up to us. With 47 years in this business, I speak for all of us when I say we're forever grateful to have already made up the ground lost during the COVID spring marketplace. For many, you are doing better than 2019, so we move into the fourth quarter. You think you might be able to let up off the gas pedal a bit and catch your breath? For others, the fourth quarter is crunch time. The clock is running. There's still much uncertainty out there. I don't know how post-election will play out. I'm not sure how long interest rates will stay at an all-time low. I can't imagine with all this money being dumped into the economy that inflation will raise its ugly head. And what if COVID resurges in a big way? How do we respond? Some say, I better do everything that is humanly possible to extend this summer run. Or as human beings, we experience paralysis of the analysis in the crazy times of today. We all hate deadlines, but the reality is we thrive on the final sprint. Look at when the most money is raised in fund drives. Think about when reports and papers were due in school. Think about projects underway. We have a tendency to save the kick until the end. We always talk about mindset, mechanics, and momentum. We have momentum going into this last quarter like never before. We need to ride that tailwind that we're enjoying for all the reasons mentioned above. Here are some action steps I recommend that will resonate. Number one, coach every renter not to renew their lease. The interest and appreciation rates make that an easy story to tell. Two, coach every homeowner to consider a move or to refinance. Another case that is easy to be made today in today's lending environment. Three, conduct a home physical for every boomer you know to help them get ready to pull the trigger. A few projects each year spreads out the cost and it eases the financial and emotional hardships. This is not a waste of time now because while they might not be ready to sell for a few years, guess what? They know someone who's ready to move now. Four, hold as many open houses as you can and stand out like that penguin in the crowd. Open houses are an easy place to stand out in the sea of sameness. Five, reach out to every homeowner that you come in contact with. Why? Because their realtor is forgetting them. In order to be a realtor for life, you need to be in their home ownership world and be their coach. Before they repair, they need to call you. Before they remodel, they need to call you. Before they refinance, they need to call you. Before they renew their insurance each year, they need to call you. They should know what their neighborhood is doing at least every quarter to minimum. Wait, wait, they should call you. No, you should be calling them. They don't know to call you for these home ownership tasks. They only think of calling you when it's time to buy or sell. 
As we close out 2020, the year of years, we have holiday seasons that will present opportunities with our families and friends. They have us pigeonholed to where we live and work. So they need to know that we can serve them and their friends, no matter where they're buying and selling, in 550 markets and 70 countries around this world. Your cousin working in Austin, Texas can help you grow your business and you can help him be a hero. Folks, momentum is what we have. Interest rates are the best ever. We have six straight years of appreciation of home values. What a playground this is to be in. We just have to put in the time and the energy doing those things that keep us front and center in the minds of every homeowner we know. The clock is running. The momentum we take into this last quarter will carry us well into 2021. Now that is exciting. Hello, everybody. You know, I've always thought our agents were the best in the business, but I love having tools that prove that to our clients. Earlier this year, we released Buy Side, a way for us to show home sellers in real time how many buyers are actively looking for a home just like theirs. Did you know, since the beginning of this year alone, with all three of our companies combined, that over 50,000 visitors used our home valuation tool to find out what their home or their neighbor's home was worth. This tool has resulted in us winning nearly 3,000 listings, 1,600 of which have closed. I'm thrilled with these results and can't wait to watch these numbers go up as the year continues. Hey everybody, this year has been extraordinary in more ways than any of us could have imagined. The routine way of doing business or what was normal and customary shifted. No more in-person consultations, no more in-person showings or open houses. However, instead of falling behind, we've sprung forward. To meet the new challenges, our training and education team pivoted almost overnight to provide a complete portfolio of new learning opportunities. Did you know that between our companies, we've provided over, over 650 in-person and virtual trainings in 2020? The markets we served are the strongest that they've ever been. And I'm thrilled to say that our sales associates have tackled those obstacles that were in front of them with a newfound confidence and for some, a new skill set. Let's keep the momentum going for the rest of the year and into 2021. Hello, everybody. As we all know, it's pretty easy to brag about the company that we work for. Everyone knows our signs and each of our company names are deeply rooted in our communities. However, sometimes our brand dominance isn't enough to capture a prospective client. Hannah Presentations, or Moxie Presents, has been a critical tool over the years in proving to both buyers and sellers that we are the best choice and the company they can trust during the biggest transaction of their lives. Did you know that over 5,600 agents have created a combined 41,000 Hannah Presentations in 2020? That's a lot of listing appointments. So congratulations and keep up the great work. Okay, welcome back and thanks Pat for that message and let's definitely finish strong in the fourth quarter um, and, and make a maximum effort. So I just opened my chocolate hugs. Everybody out there, give yourself a hug. Each piece a piece of chocolate. Um, we have things resolved and resolved to a, a new degree. Zoom has opened up. So if you go back in and you miss the beginning, you're still here to, to, for the exciting part, which is, which is really our keynote speaker, Joe Rand and hearing his message of delivering wow. Um, so you're gonna be here for Joe. Also, we're streaming live now on YouTube. So you also can get a link and it's on YouTube and we really are live out there throughout the universe on our U Education's YouTube channel. So I, 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 everybody have a hug. I'd give you one if you were there. I could use a couple here. Uh, Kate Lasore made it all work for us. So thanks, Kate. And, uh, and, and, and we'll get back to the show here. So if you have um, been to our convention in the past, the Howard Hanna Convention, we, we have a tradition, or it's existed since 2017, of giving away a car. And, um, you know, that's not something we do at a summit. We don't really have a raffle for a car. We don't give away a car. Um, however, I was with the, our partner in that sense is a buddy of mine, Jim Brown from Classic Auto Group in Ohio. And I was with Jim the other day, and he was talking about the great the, the economy today and how the car industry is just booming right now, but they don't have a, they have a lack of supply as well. And I was talking about how housing our agents have just through this pandemic, our employees, everybody's worked so hard um, that we aren't having a convention, but we're having this live virtual zoom today. 
So Jimmy called me, or I called him, I'm not sure, and said, hey, he sounds like your agents are working really hard. I know I have a shortage, but I've got a couple green cars. And he said, how about you raffle off a car at your, uh, at your event? So I'd like to show you, if you haven't been here before, if you're with Rand, you're with Tate, you're new to the company, you might miss this sort of excitement we've had at the convention. So we're gonna show you a short video of the energy that comes around with this car giveaway. And then we're gonna to cut to my buddy, Jim Brown at Classic Auto, and he's prepared to do a drawing from his showroom uh, for a new car. So take it away. Uh, Devin, let's show us the video. Make it look easy. Good morning uh, from the Classic Auto Group. My name is Jim Brown, standing on the Classic uh, Cadillac showroom here. Um, Toby and everybody from Howard Hanna, I want to say thank you uh, for inviting uh, us to your sales convention again this year, virtual sales convention. You've all been very supportive. Many of you from Howard Hanna have been very supportive of Classic for the last few years, over the last few years especially this year, uh, in spite of COVID, uh, it's been a, a good year for Classic, and I understand that in real estate, uh, you've been uh, equally as prosperous. Hobie called me last night. JB, the, uh, the convention's coming up. It's around the corner. How would you like to be a part of it? I said, well, of course, Hobie. I mean, this has been uh, kind of a part of our deal here for the last few years, and uh, I, I can't wait. When is it? Hobie says it's tomorrow. Okay, Hobie. Anything else I should know? Uh, the car needs to be green. And not just any green, but Howard Hanna green. I've got two cars that are green, Hobie. I found this one in the back last night. It's an absolute sweetheart. Someone's gonna be very lucky. Very lucky here today. Uh, what's next? Let's pull a name. How do I pull a name? Over here? This is a $45,000 car. I'm gonna pay for the lease, the payments, the taxes. I'm not paying for your insurance. I'm not paying for your gas or your speeding tickets. That's on you. Uh, if you don't want the car, I'll give you some cash. I think, I think we're gonna give a $7,000 in cash uh, as an equivalent. But I think you're gonna like this car. Cindy Durkin from Crossroads, Buffalo. Congratulations, this is your brand new car. Here we go. Is that green enough for you, Hobie? Cindy, enjoy the car. Isn't that exciting? Cindy Durkin, congratulations on your new car. And I know all you've got to do is, is we'll get in touch with you um, from the education department. Jimmy and his crew will bring the car up to you in Buffalo from Cleveland, or you can take it a drive down to Cleveland if you'd like, uh, however you'd like to handle it. But congratulations, Cindy. And isn't that a great looking car, that, that green Jeep, just uh, uh, magnificent. And I'd be remiss. Thank you, Jim Brown, again, uh, again for like the fourth year in a row or fifth year in a row from Classic Auto, uh, giving away a great car for us as a gift and a great friend of, of the whole Hannah organization. So thank you, Jim. So uh, with that, I think we're ready to move forward with um, our keynote. Is that correct? Everybody, we're getting ready. Joe Rand. Um, and so I can't give Joe enough props uh, just to, to give you his background, but Joe um, is not only become a great friend over the years, and obviously over the last year since we've, we've put this partnership together with the Rand family and now Howard Hanna Rand in, in uh, downstate New York, but Joe has been somebody that over the years I've gotten to know is one of the great minds of, of the real estate industry, uh, a thought-provoking leader, uh, one with who always strives for innovation, but brings it back being a true real estate practitioner to that customer service and, and relates so much. He's one that involves technology, coupled with how you communicate with that client and customer. So Joe is this morning gonna be our keynote speaker and really drive away a message of delivering a wow. So with that, we go off to uh, uh, New York to our good friend, Joe Rand. Good morning, everybody. My name is Joe Rand. I'm the Chief Creative Officer of Howard Hanna Rand Realty. And on behalf of everybody at the Rand organization, I wanna thank you for being so welcoming of us into the network and how excited we are to be part of the Howard Hanna family. 
And I want to say personally how grateful I am to be invited to speak at today's summit, uh, to be part of this uh, event today. Uh, so my thanks to Hobie and Helen and Annie and uh, Hadi and Duffy and everybody in the Hanna family for making me feel so welcome and allow me to share some thoughts with you today. So what I want to talk about today was a concept that we've developed called, called client-oriented real estate or core. The idea that we focus our business on the needs of our client, not on our own needs, and we focus on, on building our business by providing our clients with amazing service experiences. And as part of that, I want to start by just telling you a story about an amazing service experience that I experienced kind of secondhand in my life. Uh, and that was, I was at a wedding a couple of years ago for my cousin. He was getting married. And I found out at the wedding, the day of the wedding, I want you to understand this is the day of the wedding, this couple, both in their mid-20s. So the bride, with all of her bridal party, is up in the hotel, this very nice but older hotel in New York City, this classic hotel. Uh, and she goes to the room and they bring all the stuff because they're going to get changed later to get ready. This is the day of the wedding. They're going to get changed for the photos and the ceremony and the whole thing. So they take the wedding dress and they hang it on a hook and they get all the things unpacked and they get themselves all ready. Then at some point she's ready to put on the dress and somebody goes to reach for it on the hook, except it's not a hook. It was a sprinkler. And when they pulled the dress off the sprinkler, the sprinkler went off spraying dirty, disgusting water that had been in the pipes probably at that point for, I don't know, 50 years, 60 years, all over the dress. Now, this is a massive freak out moment. Anybody who's been in a wedding understands what, this is, what, what was going on. So everybody's freaking out. The bride, who is an absolute rock star, keeps her head, calls her fiance, soon to be her husband later that day, and explains the situation. He's like, all right, we'll put on a pair of jeans and let's go get married. Um, but she says, well, let's see what we can do. She takes the dress. She brings it down. It happened that she'd bought it at a, uh, a bridal store in Manhattan, only a cab ride away. So she takes the dress, the whole party piles into cabs. They get all their stuff and they bring it down uh, to the bridal party. They call on the way to say, they, the dress, there was an accident. It's been sprayed with dirty, uh, black, inky water. We want to see if there's something you can do about it. They bring it in. And they bring it to the guy and he says, listen, there's nothing we can do. I mean, we might be able to get it out eventually, but there's no way you can get married in this dress today. And her face falls. And you can imagine the feeling of this woman on her wedding day, the dress she picked out months ago, the dress she's been imagining herself getting married in, ruined. And the guy says to her, well, wait a second, isn't this the Vera Wang? And it was, it was a Vera Wang dress. And it was a Vera Wang dress. And apparently what they have is they have different lines of wedding dresses. So there's like the A line, the B line, the C line. And she had like the B or the C line, which was a very expensive dress, but it wasn't the A line. It wasn't the most expensive dress. He said, that's the Vera Wang, right? She says, yeah. He says, we have that here. He had the A line dress, $25,000 dress that he had on a mannequin in the store. He pulled it off the mannequin, said, try this on. They put it on her, it was too big. They brought a seamstress over and they literally sewed her into the dress. Like they didn't have time to alter it. It was like 11 o'clock, she was getting married at one o'clock. They sew her into the dress like a medieval knight getting sewn into his armor. So they put the dress on her and the place was a hotbed of activity because the bridal party's all there. They don't have time to go back to the hotel. The hotel, there's still like water, it's all damp in the room. So they, at the, in that bridal store, they all start getting ready. And there develops this esprit de corps in the whole place because there's all the brides-to-be that are there and they're all trying on their dresses and they understand what's going on. So they're all helping and people are doing each other's hair and getting the makeup done, doing all the other stuff that people have to do to get ready for their wedding. And she got that dress on and she got married at one o'clock. She was on time for her wedding. The only thing that they had to change was they had to do the pictures after the wedding. So she missed a little bit of the cocktail party, but she made the wedding on time and nobody knew. And she looked magnificent. The only reason I even know the story is that we're family. And so that night at the reception, she came and we're standing around and she tells us the story and we're dumbfounded. And, and we're, we're looking at her. She looks beautiful in this dress that she's been sewn into. And it's a $25,000 dress. And I realized I'm holding a glass of red wine that I very quickly put aside because I was not going to be the person that spilled red wine on the $25,000 borrowed dress. Why do I tell you that story? 
I tell you that story because that's a model of what we need to be in this industry. If we're going to fight off disruption, if we're going to differentiate ourselves, if we're going to uh, justify our commission and our very place in the transaction, those are the kind of experiences we need to give our clients. The thing is, delivering great service is essential to being great in business, to building your business. I know that you've been to lots of sales conferences and things like that, and they'll talk about lead generation. It's all about like generating leads. It's all about, I get it. I know all that. And that's all true. But you know what? At the very end of the day, what are you selling? What you're selling is amazing experiences with working with you. You are your product and you want your product to be awesome. And that's why we have to focus on providing these amazing experiences for our clients. And, and it's essential for a bunch of reasons. Number one, if you're great at your job, your deals close. They don't fall apart. You become great at holding your deals together, at, at keeping your clients engaged and not letting them freak out. If you're great at your job, you get more referral opportunities because your clients will be thrilled at working with you and they'll want their friends to work with you as well. They won't be afraid to refer you because they know just how great you are. You'll have greater confidence because you know you're really great at your job, which means you're not afraid to ask for the business because you know you're going to provide a better experience than anybody else will to that client. And it becomes a marketing differentiator. You know, your ratings, your reviews, all that stuff. But you know what? The, the big differentiator becomes all the people that you can, you can point to to say, tell you what, here are my last three clients. Call any one of them. I'm not giving you, I'm not giving you a list of, of my three favorite clients who had the best experience with me. Here's the three most recent ones. They all had an amazing experience that I'll tell you all about. It. Becomes a marketing differentiator. Talk about how great you are. And if you're great at your job, you will have good metrics like your listings will sell more than anybody else. They'll sell for closer to the asking price. All of that stuff. And lastly, the reason we want to be great at our jobs is that it's a more satisfying life. It's a better way to live your life. It's waking up every morning knowing you're making a difference to other people, that you're making them happy, that you're giving them the best of what you can do. That's a great way to wake up every morning. That's a great way to live your life. Now, of course, in real estate, we have some very specific challenges to providing great service. One of them is what I call the S word, the idea that we are in sales. Because people have this idea that when you're in sales, it's all about razzmatazz and tricking people and using scripts and dialogues to manipulate them and things like that. That's not what you do. That's not what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. What you do on a day-to-day -day basis is you provide services to people. Yes, you do sales when you're on a listing presentation, you do sales when you're negotiating, you do sales at certain times when you're working with clients, but most of the time when you work with clients, you're providing them a service. You're not trying to sell them. When you go out with a buyer, are you trying to get that buyer to buy that house or that house? No, you're there to guide them through the process, to show them the houses that are out there and help them make their decision. But you don't push it on them. You're not like a, you're working at a timeshare that you're trying to get them to buy the timeshare. You don't care what they buy. You just want to help them through the process and establish the kind of relationship that they'll buy with you. The other challenge we have is the independent contractor uh, model that we have in this industry, which makes it sometimes very difficult for brokers to be able to establish guidelines for agents to follow that we feel we have to be hands off because everybody's an independent contractor and they have to do it their own way. Well, you know, yes, that's true in some cases, but you know, when it comes to providing a great service experience, when it comes to providing happiness to our clients and, and, and being fair and, and being uh, consistent, I think brokers can establish those standards and agents can establish those standards for themselves and then follow them. And then the other challenges we have is a lack of training, that we have lots of training in this industry about sales and just very little in this industry about how to provide great experiences for clients. Think about all the courses you've taken at conferences about sales techniques and scripts and neuro-linguistic programming and all that stuff and how little training you've gotten in how do you actually raise the, raise the level of service you provide? How do you provide client service experiences? How many classes do we have on customer service at all in this industry? And finally, I, and, and, and the, finally, it's the nature of the transaction. Our transactions are difficult. It's difficult to provide great service with so many moving parts, particularly because a lot of those moving parts are things that we don't have control over, like the mortgage and the title and stuff like that. And then finally, the most dispiriting part of this is that consumers sometimes don't reward it. Sometimes they're willing to work with their friend of a friend who doesn't really know anything or their friend from the country club who sold one house last year. 
you know, the, or, the, or the person who happens to be at the open house when they walk in at the right time. We have in this industry whole lead generation systems that are built upon the idea that the client might not be that choosy. They might just take who's in front of them. What we want is we want choosy clients. We want clients who expect the best because that's what we're going to provide for them. So we want customers to reward it and we want to differentiate ourselves. And that's changing because consumers are getting more savvy about the agent they work with. So that's becoming less of an issue. And, and if that happens, that's good for the best agents because the best agents, the ones who provide great service experiences, they'll get more clients. So I want to talk to you about the concept of bringing the wow. And that's the idea of providing such an amazing service experience to your clients that they go, wow, wow, that was pretty great. And, and what people think of when they think of great services, they think that it's all about attitude. They think it's all about enthusiasm. They think it's all about, well, it's all about effort. You have to really want to do a good job. And effort and attitude is definitely part of it. But a big part of it, a bigger part of it is actually having technique, is actually having the skills and the knowledge to provide a great service experience. Because you know what? If I'm going to get a surgery, my doctor, I'm, I'm, I want my doctor to be enthusiastic about doing a great job for me, but it's really important for me that the doctor actually knows what she's doing, that the doctor actually knows how to do the surgery. Same thing's true in our industry. It's not, it's not enough just to have the right attitude. It's not enough to be enthusiastic. What you need is you need to design systems that create, mechanically create great experiences and then opportunities for you to bring the wow. So let's talk about the different ways that you can do that. And we'll start with, you have to listen to what your clients are saying. What do I mean by that? Well, years ago, when I was first working in real estate and I first had, after years of being a law professor and a bunch of other things, which didn't make me any money, I had money. And I needed to invest the money in some reasonable, smart fashion. So I started to, I just said, I have to meet with a financial planner. So I went, set up an appointment, me and my wife to go meet with a financial planner. We go to his office, we sit down with him, and I'm expecting to get like a PowerPoint or something that he's gonna to try to convince me to invest my money with him. He did none of that. He sat down, he had a pad of paper, and he started asking me questions. He started asking me, hey Joe, you know, where do you wanna be in five years? Where do you wanna be in 10? Joe, what do you know about financial instruments? How well do you know equities? How well do you know fixed income? Um, what are your biggest concerns about your money? What are your biggest fears for the future? What are your biggest hopes? What, if you had $10 million, what would you do with it? All these kinds of questions. And questions that, honestly, I never even really asked myself. And then he goes to my wife. He started asking her questions. And she starts answering him. And she's saying things I've never heard her say, things I never knew about her. And this went on for, I don't know, about an hour that we're, we're doing this. And he's asking us questions. And we're talking. And then he's following up with more questions. And as the hour went on, what I discovered was something very interesting. I started to trust him. I started to genuinely trust him and believe in him and, and feel good about him and, and be interested in working with him. Not because of anything he said, but because he showed an authentic interest in me. And not only that, by asking me questions and getting me to, to communicate all of my inner thoughts and whatnot, he was building credibility. He was building rapport with me in the best way possible by asking me questions and letting me talk about myself. And, and the more I confessed to him about my fears and my dreams and everything else, the more I trusted him, almost in like a mental jujitsu that, what am I telling him all this stuff unless I already trust him? I wouldn't tell somebody I don't trust about these kinds of things, so I must trust him, ergo, I have to invest my money with him, which I did, and he's my financial planner to this day. Why? Because he didn't make that meeting, that initial meeting, a presentation. He didn't make it about him talking and me listening. He made it about me talking and him listening. And as I walked out of that meeting with him, I thought to myself, why don't we do more of that in real estate? Why in real estate are our listing presentations built around this idea that agents do a presentation, that it's a song and a dance, that it's, it's you go in and you have scripts that you have rehearsed and you do a performance and uh, and, 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 and you have to practice it and all that kind of stuff. It's so hard. Performance is hard. You know, doing a staged uh, 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 rehearsed script is hard. You know what's much easier? You go in and you ask questions and you show an authentic interest in the answers and you, 
express your uh, 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 sincere hopes of trying to solve that person's problem and how, figuring out how you can help them. That's how you build rapport with somebody, not by doing a song and dance for them, not by trying to mirror their gestures and all that kind of stuff, not by you see a picture of a sailboat and you say, oh, I like sailing too. No, you establish rapport with somebody by showing an interest in them, by asking them questions about themselves, by getting them to talk about themselves. Talk less, listen more. And that's a lesson for everything that we do. We talk too much in this industry. We gotta listen more to what our clients are telling us because the first step in providing a great service experience for our clients is listen to what they are saying. Listen to what they're telling us and listen for what they're not telling us. Because sometimes what they're not telling us is as important as what they're telling us. Let me give you some examples of like great service experiences that came from people listening. I heard this story, Will Goddard is a restauranteur, restaurateur in Manhattan. He told the story at a conference I was at recently, I asked him about it afterwards. And he said that he, he walks, he, he works at a very, very high end, fine restaurant. And he always walks the floor and he listens and he'll go and he'll refill the water very, you know, very casually and not like, but he's listening to what they're saying. He wants to hear what kind of experience they're having. He wants to know, is there something he can do for them? And he goes to this one table and it became clear from the conversation that it was a group of people who had come from out of town to go on a restaurant tour of Manhattan. They'd been there all week and they'd done breakfast, lunch, dinner at different restaurants every day. And this was their last meal. They'd saved it for last. And as they're talking, one of them says, yeah, we pretty much had every meal in Manhattan except, you know, a dirty water hot dog you know, the kinds of dirty water hot dogs that you can get on the street corner in Manhattan. They're terrible. I mean, they're, they're called dirty water hot dogs. They're literally made with the water from the wedding dress thing that I told you about before. They're awful, but they're authentically New York and they're an interesting experience. So they were, they were talking sort of like wistfully about the fact that they never got their dirty water hot dog. So he listens and he hears and he goes back to the kitchen. He sends somebody downstairs to a stand to go buy a couple of hot dogs. And they come up and he takes the hot dogs and he puts them on a plate and he kind of elevates them a little bit, you know, so they're not quite dirty water. They, they're still recognizable as dirty water hot dogs, but they're more, you know, fine cuisine. And he brings it to the table and the people are like blown away that, that he listened to them, that he had it, he went above and beyond to go get something for them that would, that would uh, that give them this experience. It was delightful. What a surprise for them because he listened, he listened. We all have to listen. I have a friend who's a broker who learned that lesson many years ago when he was thinking of downsizing an office. And in order to do it, he was gonna have to go to the agents and get them to give up desks that they had. And he went to them and he said, well, you'll give up your desk, but here's what you get if you give up the desk. And he thought that like a certain percentage of them would, would give up the desk. And he was giving them like a little bit of a bump and split. And they all took the split instead of the desk. And he had thought that they all wanted these desks. And it turns out they didn't really want the desks. That he, he listened to them when they, when, well, by giving them the option, he was listening to them, but he realized that he hadn't really been paying attention to their needs as their needs changed, as the business became more virtual, more you're out on the road, you're doing things with clients. And I'll tell you a story that I, I had experience back when I was working as an agent. I worked as an agent, my, my family's had this company for almost 40 years and I got my license when I was 18. And I pretty much every summer worked as an agent for three months, tried to generate some leads that I could refer out or maybe even do one deal. And if I did one deal, that was like beer money for the year. And I had this one client and she had this very weird restriction when she, went, when she wanted to know about houses that they couldn't be any stairs, like no stairs, which in my market is very unusual. Most houses are two flights, two, stair, two story houses, no stairs. So I'm like racking the MLS trying to find, you know, houses on one level, all capes. Like I'm showing her cape after cape and she hates all the capes that I keep showing her. So finally we're talking afterwards and I'm not like saying to her, Why, are we sure I can't show you a house with some stairs? I don't say that, but I'm sort of trying to figure out what it is about the stairs. And what I eventually figure out was that she had an elderly mother who was not living with her, but her plan was within the next couple of years, the mother was gonna come live with her and the mother had trouble with stairs and couldn't climb the stairs. And so she didn't wanna buy a house that then her mother would not be able to live with her in. So now I knew, all right, well, I, it doesn't have to not have stairs. It just has to have a place where 
the mother-in-law or the mother could have a bedroom on the main level and not have to go up and down stairs to get in and out. Or maybe a house with an elevator if that was available back then. And eventually I found something. And because I listened. And I listened not just to what she was telling me, but what she wasn't telling me. And that's what we have to do. We have to be open. Our ears have to be open. We have to be receptive to what our clients are telling us. You know, someone once asked me when I was speaking, they said, what's the difference between marketing and sales? And I thought about it for a second. I said, here's the difference. The difference is that marketing is the story you tell about yourself. Sales is about finding out their story. When you're in sales, it's not about talking. It's not about you. Blah. Sales is about finding out what they need, find out what they need, and then figure out how you're going to give it to them. That's what sales is. And that's why it's different from marketing. Second, once you've listened to what they need, you have to think expansively about it. Listen and then think broadly. Don't just limit yourself. Oh, whenever I talk about this, agents tell me, well, they need to buy a house. Yes, they need to buy a house, but every buyer is different. Every buyer has different needs. Well, they need to sell a house. Well, every seller is different. Every seller has different concerns, cares, uh, uh, fears, hopes for what they're going through in this process. You have to listen to what they're saying and then you have to think expansive. What do they need? What do they need? Well, let me tell you the story to give you an, to, to illustrate the, how important it is to think expansively about what people need. And it's about the history of the rental industry, the movie rental industry. Now, some of you young people, you millennials, you don't realize that like movies, it's different now than it used to be. Now, any movie you want, you just press a button, it streams to you anytime you want. You go back 30 years, that's not the way it was. It wasn't the way when I was a kid. When I was a kid, you saw a movie, it was in the theaters. And then when it was out of the theaters, you never saw it again. Maybe like once in a while, Sunday night at the movies, there'd be a movie on TV and it was always a big event. Hey, a movie on my TV. But it wasn't like, it was it. You saw Jaws, it was in the theater for like a year and a half. And then when it came out of the theaters, you never saw it again. You can't even imagine a situation like that. Well, that changed in the late 70s with the invention of the VCR. And it changed with the idea that, well, now you could watch movies at home. But here was the thing. The movie studios were very suspicious of, of, of VCRs. They were very suspicious about the idea that people might watch movies at home and then they wouldn't go to the theater anymore and then that would cannibalize the theater sales, which of course it eventually did. And, and the movie studios had such a strong relationship with the movie theaters that they didn't want to do that. So what they did was they took all the movies that you could, that you could buy. You could buy a movie to play it at home, a VHS tape played at home. But they priced them at like $300. In 1977, it'd be like $1,000 today. You're spending $1,000 to watch a movie. But that's what they did. George Atkinson. George Atkinson discovered this idea of what if I bought all the movies and then rented them out for a couple of days and you bring them back. So I buy them for $300. I rent them out for you for 10 bucks for two days. You bring them back, rent them out another two days, 10 more bucks, eventually make a lot of money. He started something called the video station a little video rental store in California, in Los Angeles. First of its kind, as far as anybody can tell. And from there, he started a whole industry. He created a whole industry because he thought expansively about what people need. People want to watch movies at home, but they can't afford $1,000 for a movie. So maybe they'll rent it for 10 bucks. He started the movie rental. It was a club, you pay money to join the club, and then you pay every time you have a rental. And from his inspiration, came a whole industry. By the mid, early 80s, those of you that can remember, there was a video shop in every block, in, in every main street in the country had a little mom and pop video store, you know, maybe a couple hundred square feet, it'd have maybe 500 videotapes or something like that. And you would go there, you'd rent movies, you'd get a little card, you'd have a little card uh, for your membership and whatnot. So he created that. But there were problems with the little mom and pop video stores. The mom and pop video stores were fine, but you know what, they didn't have much of a selection. Like if you wanted to go see the first run movie, the movie that just came out on VHS, you had to be there like early because they would have three copies and they'd sell out by noon on Friday. So along came Blockbuster. Now, we all remember now Blockbuster as an abject lesson in failure, as, a, as, a, as almost like a case study, a model for like what not to do. But in its time, Blockbuster was this huge success story. It went from nothing to being a $9 billion company in 1994 dollars. A $9 billion company is what it sold for. Why? It recognized that needs had changed 
that people didn't want to just uh, uh, rent video uh, VHS tapes. They wanted the first run VHS tapes. He created, they created a better experience, the experience of a big store with full shelves and well lit and you could buy popcorn and all the other stuff. Blockbuster was so successful, they owned Friday night. The, the phrase, make it a blockbuster night. That's what Friday night was. You'd go in, you'd rent the movie and you'd keep it for the weekend. But Blockbuster had a flaw in its business model that drove people crazy. And you all know, if you lived through it, you know what the flaw was. The flaw was late fees, rewind fees. People who are millennials don't even know what rewinding is, but rewind, you had to rewind the tape at the end. If you didn't, they charge you like three bucks. And if you didn't bring the movie back on Monday morning, they charge you another five bucks a day. And you never remember to bring the movie back on Monday morning. You rent the movie on Friday, you watch it on Saturday, you, you come home on Monday from work and you look up and it's still sitting on the VCR. So you take it, you put it in its white case, you put it back, you rewind it, you put it in the white case. You put it on the car, you put it on the seat, you go to work, come home, ah, it's still there. Go the next day, Wednesday, drive to work, come home, ah, it's still there. You don't bring it back for like a week and it ends up costing like 50 bucks to watch Bohemian Rhapsody or whatever. People hated that. They hated the late fees. So what happened? Somebody came along to service the changing needs of clients. And that person was Netflix, Reed Hastings. Legend has it that he rented a movie from Blockbuster and he had $40 of late fees and then he found in Netflix. It's like an apocryphal story. I don't think it actually happened that way. But Netflix, who millennials know what Netflix is, but they think of it as a streaming technology. Back then it was a DVD rental technology. They said, well, you hate late fees. Here's what we're gonna do. You get a club membership and you, uh, at any given time, you can have three movies, three DVDs. I don't have time to explain what a DVD is to the millennials. I know you've never seen a DVD, but a DVD was a little thin thing. You put an envelope, you send it to the, send it in the mail, you go back to Netflix and they send you a new movie. So you get one movie, you watch it, you send it back, you get another movie. You always have three movies at home. No lay fees, just a monthly subscription fee. They destroyed Blockbuster, absolutely destroyed them, drove them out of business because they recognized that the needs had changed of the clients and they built a technology, they built a whole system around what clients actually, what customers actually needed. And then Netflix, an amazing company, kept pivoting. They kept changing. When they realized that streaming was coming along and it would render their DVD business irrelevant, they became the biggest streaming company. And when they realized that streaming wasn't enough, you needed to have content, they started creating content. And now people have Netflix subscriptions, not to watch movies, they have it to watch Peaky Blinders or Orange is the New Black or any of the original programming that Netflix has. Because Netflix keeps focusing on what their clients need and keeps delivering on that. Thinking expansively, what do they need now that's different from yesterday? And that's why they're successful. And that's what all of them really did. That's what George Atkinson did. Think expansively about what people need. They need to be able to rent movies at home. Blockbuster thought expansively, they need bigger stores with more selection. And then Netflix thought expansively saying, well, what they really need is they need to have a system of, which doesn't drive them crazy with late fees. And then they need streaming and then they need content. That's what we all need to do. That's what we need to do with all our clients in every situation. Look for needs that are not being met. I put Zillow's logo up there, why? Because Zillow built a whole business around the fact that we weren't meeting the needs of our clients we, we offered them free CMAs, but really it was a come on for them to come in and do a listing presentation. We weren't really interested in giving them a valuation for their home. There was a need that we knew clients had. They wanna know how much their home was worth and we weren't willing to tell them unless they sat through a listing presentation. Zillow serviced the need, built a billions and billions dollar company out of servicing that need. Two, think creatively about how to meet those needs. Think about the way Amazon has changed, completely changed retail by constantly recreating the retail experience about thinking what do clients need they need reviews of products so they can vet the good products from the bad what else do they need well they need a uh, next day delivery or second day delivery amazon's been an amazing story in being responsive to what clients need and think expansively about it and then you have to adapt as needs change and i put kodak up there because kodak's obviously the the model lesson in not adapting, that they had the technology to do digital photography that could have been their transition from film. And they didn't do it because they were so wedded to film that they wouldn't change. And because they wouldn't change, they were basically rendered irrelevant. We don't want that to happen to us. We have to think expansively about needs, look for needs that are not being met, 
think creatively about how to meet them, and then adapt as needs change. Number three, build systems that deliver consistently great experiences. Let me tell you a quick story. I put a book up here that you can see, the book called The Disney Way by a guy named Bill Capadai and a woman named Lynn Jackson. Bill Capadai writes the book. It's all about how Disney's, Disney's approach to operational excellence, which is all about attention to detail and things like that. So he writes this book and he's at a conference one day and he's sitting by the pool after speaking and a gentleman comes up to him to say, you're Bill Capadai. He says, yes. He says, the guy says, I'm, my, name's, my name's John and I have a, Midwest, a factory in the Midwest and we read your book and it changed our business completely. And Bill's like, oh, tell me about it. And John says, well, you know, I read the book and then I gave it to all my top managers and then we formed a task force and we got it to everybody on the line and we, we formed a whole uh, committee and we create a whole movement and initiative and we built, we came up with a slogan and we put it on t-shirts and hats and posters and everything else all built around the Disney way. And Bill says, really, tell me, what was the slogan? And the guy says, our slogan is, we clean the windows as soon as they get dirty. We clean the windows as soon as they get dirty. Because the idea is, when there's a problem, fix it. Don't let it fester. If you have a manufacturing uh, plant, right? There's a problem on the line. Don't let it you know, become someone else's problem. You fix it. All right, that's the idea. Now, I'll be honest with you. Between me and you, if all of us took the, took the mantra that we're going to clean the windows as soon as they get dirty and not let them get even dirtier, it's not bad. But as he explains this motto, this, this, this slogan to Bill Capadai, Bill says, I got to tell you, thanks for buying the book, and I'm glad it made such a difference for you, but you missed the point of the Disney way completely. And the guy, the Midwestern guy, like, oh, my, really? How did I, I read the book like 100 times. How did I miss it? And Bill Capadai says, the, the slogan, we clean the windows as soon as they get dirty, that's not the way Disney operates. At Disney, the windows never get dirty. The windows never get dirty. The idea is that you create systems, you put them in place that eliminate the possibility of problems, that don't let problems come up. Not that you fix the problem when it happens. Yes, you fix the problem when it happens, but your goal is not to fix the problem when it happens. Your goal is to keep the problem from happening in the first place. Create systems that prevent it from happening. I put a picture of David Lee Roth up there. The reason I have David Lee Roth up there is that Van Halen was famous for this rider they put in their contract which said, no brown M&Ms in their rider, that you couldn't have brown M&Ms in the green room. Why? Not because they were a bunch of divas, but because that was their way of testing the promoter, that the promoter paid attention to detail, that they could walk into that green room, and if they saw brown M&Ms, they knew that that promoter didn't pay attention to their rider, and their rider had a bunch of stuff in it about load-bearing walls and like electrical specifications, things that if they were not paid attention to would be dangerous to the band and its fans. So they said, we're gonna put in this rider so we can walk in and immediately know, is that promoter doing his job or not? That is a bright line, keep the windows from getting dirty. Starbucks has a, has a program like that. They call it the sweep. The idea is that at regular intervals, the Starbucks people are supposed to go to the, the area where you get the cream and the sugar back when we would all do that. You get the cream and the sugar and the stuff and they clean it and they fill everything up because you're never supposed to grab a canister and it's empty. They'll replenish the canisters at half full. That's what you need to do. Put in these prophylactic rules that keep the windows from getting dirty. I, I put flowers up there. Why? Because my, I buy flowers for my wife every Friday, even if I didn't do anything wrong. Why? Because it creates a nice vibe for us on the weekends. You know, if I buy flowers only when I do something wrong, flowers become associated with me screwing up. I get flowers all the time, keeps everything happy. And then I also put up something you can see called a, 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 it's a transaction guide. We're big on checklists at my company. We, we have checklists for everything. Why? Because you follow a checklist that keeps your attention to detail. It keeps the windows from ever getting dirty. And that's what we have to do. We have to keep the windows. We have to create those standards that create a bedrock of great service. Then number four, create magic tricks that surprise or delight. Once you've established these prophylactic rules that provide bedrock service that keep the windows from getting dirty, start getting creative. Start looking for opportunities to do the magic tricks, the things that are gonna delight people because they surprise them. Why do I have a picture of an iPhone there? Because when, about 10 years ago, I was with a group of people at a conference, at a real estate conference, and somebody had just gotten the new iPhone like a week after it came out, which had Siri. And none of us had ever experienced Siri or anything like it before. Now, 
it's mostly an annoyance. Like when I hit Siri, it's almost always an accident and it's speaking at me. I don't want it to speak at me. But back then, it was this amazing novel thing. So we spent like an hour with the guy in the back of a bus while we were going to a dinner asking Siri dumb questions. We started with like regular questions and then Siri would answer. And then we started to get dumber and dumber. You know, Siri, do you love me? Siri, what's the meaning of life? You know, Siri, will I meet, you know, predictions, things like that. And every time Siri had like a clever answer and it was delightful. We had so much fun with it. Why? Because at some point the Apple engineers creating Siri and creating, you know, writing the scripts and all those things for the, they said, people are going to ask Siri stupid questions. So let's come up with really funny answers for the stupid questions. And they created that whole model. Now you have Alexa, you ask Alexa to sing, Alexa sings a song. Google Assistant does the same thing, but Siri was the first to do that kind of stuff. And it was great. It was delightful. It was a magic trick, right? Just because they thought, hey, let's, let's try to give clients something fun here. That's what I think of as a magic trick. What's another magic trick? I went to the Four Seasons years ago. I check in, it was like 10 o'clock at night. I go to bed, I wake up, I go to breakfast with my wife. We walk into the breakfast room and the person at the front says, oh, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Rand, welcome. How did she know my name? Well, I've since discovered that the Four Seasons really emphasizes this. Like they put, they put bonuses based on this. Like you are supposed to know the names of the guests at the hotel. And they'll give you like, they'll, they'll Google you and find your pictures on Facebook and put them up and they're, they're sort of in the backstage areas of the hotel. Here's all the guests, here's their names, so they can recognize you by sight. But it's a skill that they develop. It's something they teach that's important. They value it. And so people do it and it's delightful, it's amazing. It's a, it's, a, it's a magic trick. It's what I call the deliberate wow. It's something that you put it in place and it mechanically engineers this wow factor. Because when, he, when, when she asked, she said, hi, Mr. and Mrs. Rand, I went, wow, it was cool. No, it didn't change my life. It wasn't like the most amazing experience ever, but it was a cute little trick. And it was done because the people put in place procedures that would generate that wow. Mechanically, that's the point. You can design these things. You can make them. It's not about, oh, I'm really, I really want to do a great job. It's all about enthusiasm. No, it's about thinking creatively about what your clients need and then giving them that and creating systems that generate it, both as a Windows never get dirty way, but also as, you know, cool things that make them happy. Another one, the surprise, wow, the Gramercy Tavern. If you make an appointment at the Gramercy, a reservation at the Gramercy Tavern, they ask you, is it a special occasion? It's just a check off their list. Like when someone makes a reservation, you ask, or is it for a special occasion? And that's fine. But you know what happens sometimes? I make a reservation today. Why is my making a reservation? I make it for November. Why November? Well, it's our anniversary. So I make it. They say, is there a special occasion? Oh yeah, it's our anniversary. Three months later, I go to the restaurant. I come in. I say, oh, uh, ran party of two, eight o'clock. And they say, Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Rand, happy anniversary. Wow, how did they know it was my anniversary? How did they know? Like, it could be kind of creepy if it was in the wrong situation, but like, the idea is that you feel flattered. How did they know that? And then you remember they asked you the question, it's such a neat trick. Oh, I know how they did it, but it's the delightful. It's the, it's the rabbit out of a hat. How did they do that? It's cool to find out, to figure it out. The surprise, wow, it was a surprise. And surprises are always really good if they're good surprises. And then the anticipatory, wow. I was uh, talking to a gentleman at the Ritz, Ritz Carlton uh, not long ago uh, who runs there. They do an executive service training program. And he was telling a story about what they, what the, one of the things that they did. And it was kind of cool. It was the idea that they used to have this, they had this, this property with a rooftop bar, a roof, like a, like a pool bar and a pool area. And it would get really hot. And they noticed that at around noontime, they started to get lots of requests for people that wanted water, just to get a glass of water. And so what they did was at every day at 1145, they would have somebody make up like a, you know, a pitcher of ice water with some cucumber slices in it. Because you know, just ice water in a pitcher is, that's not fancy. You put some cucumber in it, now it's fancy. And at 1145, they start walking around with the cucumber water. And everyone's like, oh, I was just thinking I could use, that's perfect, thank you. Why? Because they knew from experience that people start to get thirsty around noon at poolside. So they do the cucumber water, and while they're doing it, they hand out the menus. Oh, if you'd like something to eat, you have all this stuff. But the idea is it's a, it's a just, it's, it's a little wow, but it's a good wow. It's a wow that like, 
oh, they anticipated my needs before I even knew I had them. Number five, look for opportunities to go above and beyond. If you are providing that bedrock service and if you create systems that create these magic tricks, what's gonna happen is you're gonna find yourself in situations where opportunities present themselves to do something amazing for a client. I'll give you an example from outside real estate, that exploding champagne that you're seeing on the screen. The exploding champagne is from a story of the Union Square Cafe. And a couple came in to have dinner and they sat down and they call over the, uh, the wine steward and they said, listen, I just had a question for you. We have a, it's our anniversary tonight and we bought a really expensive bottle of champagne and I forgot to chill it. So when we left to go to dinner, I put it in the freezer thinking it would chill it more quickly. And now I'm thinking to myself, maybe that was a mistake. And the wine steward says, yeah, yeah, that was a terrible mistake. You should never do that. He says, oh, and now, you know, dinner's ruined. They just ordered. What is he going to do? He's going to go back uptown. And the steward says, hold on, let me get the, let me get the manager. The manager comes over and says, he explained the situation to me. Listen, we don't want you to interrupt your dinner. If you're okay with it, if you give us the keys, we'll send somebody to your place and we'll take the champagne out of the freezer. Guy looks at his wife, says, if you guys want to do that, it's fine by me. They give him the keys. But half an hour later, guy comes back, manager comes back, here's your keys. Everything's fine. The champagne was fine. They enjoy their dinner. They go home. They come home. They open up the fridge. They're ready to celebrate. And not just the champagne. There's a note from the manager saying, thank you for celebrating with us at the Union Square Cafe. There's a little box of chocolates. There's like something else there. That's a wow. Why? Because the person looked for the opportunity to go above and beyond. And then there's the story of Joshi. Joshi's the little stuffed animal that you see there on the screen. Joshi was this child, this like four-year-old's favorite stuffed animal. If you have kids, you know how important that stuffed animal is, that you should have like 10 of them, nine of them locked in the basement. So when you lose one, you just pull one out of the basement. They didn't do that. They only had the one Joshi. So when Joshi got left behind at a, I think it was a Ritz Carlton, it was a Ritz Carlton in uh, the Carolinas. They get home, they realize no Joshi. They were there for the weekend. They come home, no Joshi. Kids freaking out. They call up the hotel. They say, listen, is there any chance someone found a stuffed animal, a little brown, I think it's a giraffe, in our room? They get a call back a little while later. We found Joshi. Oh, thank God, they found Joshi. And, they, and, and the guy says, please, can you send it back next day air? I'll pay for it. The manager says, we're already doing that. Please, it's, it's, it's our pleasure to do it. We'll take care of it. Next day, package comes, there's Joshi, Joshi's back. But there was something else in that package. Because when they called up to say, could we get Joshi back when they knew they had found him, they explained to the manager of the hotel that they had told the kid that Joshi had stayed behind for his own little vacation. He'd stuck around at the Ritz Carlton. So when Joshi came back, the manager had arranged for this, for them to get pictures taken of Joshi doing stuff at the hotel. He's getting a tan, he's playing with other stuffed animals, he's riding a golf cart, he's getting a little massage, he's playing, he's hanging out with the security crew. I mean, wow, wow, how cool is that? How great is that? Not just that they found the bear, that was awesome. But they took the opportunity to create the delight that they knew the kid would have when he saw the pictures of Joshi having fun. Finally, you gotta treat mistakes as opportunities. You gotta treat something goes wrong. That is the best time for you to create a great experience. Because you know what? When, when I ask people, audiences like you, but when I'm actually with them, when I ask them to tell me about great service experiences, 90% of the time it's the story of a recovery. It's the story of something that went wrong and then it got put right and that's what was memorable is that you went from the lows to the highs. That's what was great about the story. So I'll tell you two stories like that. One quick one, United Airlines. Guy was going to see his dying mother, dying mother. And he had to make a connecting flight and his first flight was delayed. And he was gonna miss the connecting flight. And he starts crying. In his seat, in the plane, he's crying. Flight attendant comes over and says, is everything okay, can I do something? He explains to her what's going on. That, that they were late and he had to make a tight connection. So the flight attendant calls down, he gets off the plane. They have a thing for him right there. They say, we gotta get you to gate 18 right away. They get him to gate 18, they, they've held the plane for him. They held the plane knowing what was going on. They held the plane for him. 
You think he remembers that? And I'll tell you a story from my own experience. We had a listing, like listings you have. And in that listing, there was a woman who had a treasured Yadro collection. If you've never had a client with a treasured Yadro collection, you know how much people treasure their Yadro. It's little porcelain figurines from Spain. And she had a collection in a glass cabinet. And the agent told them, you should probably take the Yadro and store them, like as a staging matter, but also as a safety matter. They didn't listen. They didn't want to put their Yadro away. So a month or two into the listing, one of the Yadro turns up broken. And the owner is apoplectic and angry at us, saying that it's our fault, that we didn't supervise showings, and that's why the Yadro was broken. Now, it turns out, we found out that on Sunday, like, on Sunday, like two days before she discovered it broken, she'd had a big party with a bunch of her grandkids and stuff in the house. That's when the Yadro was broken. Because, you know, you know, as well as I do, someone's going and showing a house. They're not opening up the cabinets and picking up the Yadro. But there was no, no satisfying her. And I get it. She was upset. So I'm talking to the agent about it. I'm like, tell me about this client. What can we do here? And the agent explains to me that this client was listing with her, buying with her, had referred her daughter with her who was listing with her and buying with her. I said to her, so there's four sides that basically depend on the happiness of this client? And she said, yeah. I said, and how much is the Yadro? She says, $1,500. I said, let's go buy her a Yadro. So she had wanted us to give her the $1,500. We did one better than that. We didn't just give her the $1,500 to buy the Yadro. We found the exact Yadro that had been broken and we replaced it. We, we bought it on eBay or something and brought it to her and put it in a little box and said, please, with our compliments, we're sorry that what happened, here's your Yadro. Now please lock up that cabinet. Treat mistakes as opportunities to correct the mistake and create great experiences. Because if you're great at your job, all sorts of good things happen. You will make more money. You will have more happiness. You will generate more happy clients. You will get more referrals. You will win more awards. All those things will happen if you're great at your job, if you deliver great experiences to people. And I'll tell you one final story, the Rockstall story. This is a story about an agent in upstate New York. And what he did was he had this little magic trick that he did, a little little wow that he would do every year. When every year when it would get ready for the first snow, which in upstate New York is August, maybe September, early in the year is the first snow in, in upstate. He would go in his truck and he would take his kid and his 14 year old and they would go buy rock salt and they'd put it in the back of the truck and they would drive to all of his favorite referral clients and they would drop off a bag of rock salt with a little ribbon, with a little personal note. It was like a Buffini thing he was doing. Love Brian Buffini, awesome trainer. Um, he was doing a little pop by, likes the personal note, puts the ribbon on, drops it off, boom. Front door, if they're there, he gives it to him. If not, he drops it off at the front door. He does that for like 30 or 40 clients. And it's always a nice thing. He, get, he always gets a lot of nice emails back and phone calls. People love it. Oh, it's such a nice idea. So thoughtful. It's a little wow. It's a little thoughtful wow. It's an anticipatory wow. It's going to snow. Let's get you some rock salt because you probably ran out of rock salt at the end of last year or you don't remember where it is. He gets a call from a friend of his, one of his top referral clients. And the guy says, Bill, I have to tell you, I was out with my wife and we were at the doctor and she got some not so great news and we're both sort of down because it's gonna be tough, it's gonna be hard. And we get in the car and we're both just feeling awful. And as we're going home, it starts to snow. And I realized that I can't even be with her because I have to drop her off and go back out and get some rock salt. And as we pull into the driveway, I see on the front, front door, the front stoop, there's the rock salt that you brought us. And I don't have to leave. And I just start to cry. I've told that story a hundred times. I wrote about that story in my book. How many times do you think that guy has told that story? The, 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 the guy who found the rock salt on his stoop. That this agent, doing something small, doing something just a little wow, became a huge wow. Why? Because the fact is, my friends, if you're always thinking about what other people need, if you're always thinking expansively about what they need, it just, those kinds of things happen to you. It makes you a better agent, but more importantly, my friends, it makes you a better person.
It makes you better at your job. It makes you better at life. It makes you better. I, you know, since I started teaching this and living this, it gets into your bones. It gets into your DNA. It changes you. You, you instinctively and, 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 and reflexively think about what other people need and how you can service those needs. And it's not just in business, you do it. It's made me a better husband. It's made me a better father. It's made me a better citizen, a better friend, a better brother, a better son, a better person. And that's what I wish for all of you. Yes, I want you to be great in your business. And one of the ways to be great in your business is deliver unbelievable experiences for your clients. But it's not just about that. It's about helping you become better and happier as a person. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to have a little bit more, you want to read that story about the rock salt, you want to find out more about this philosophy, if you just go to joerand.com slash free, you can get a free email, ebook download of my most recent book, How to Be a Great Real Estate Agent, courtesy of Howard Hanna Company. So I thank them for providing it to all of you. I thank you for watching. Please, joerand.com slash free, get yourself a free copy of the book. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. Wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that amazing? And uh, Joe, thank you. Not only is it great to have you speak uh, for the whole group today uh, and share your wisdom, but wanted to let you know that one of the advantages as we always, as we grow, as we have new partnerships and merge with new people, it's not only marketing and it's not only technology, but it's great minds like Joe Rand now being part of your company. Uh, across the whole footprint, uh, being there to help with our education, help with our motivation, and being able to speak to everybody. And now we, we can see um, one part of why the Rand family is so wonderful. And the Rand agents, uh, as you connect with them, they will, uh, they'll definitely tell you uh, uh, great stories about Joe, Matt, Danny, the whole family, and Marsha, uh, and learn more. So, uh, Joe, thank you. And your message was on target. Um, I, I just, uh, it, it's funny, uh, this, every morning I get up and, and I look sort of to motivate myself, I get a little motivational quote that's sent to me. Um, uh, and one of them that, I, that was embedded in that message today, embedded in that customer service, that wow, was my quote this morning that comes to my phone was change before you have to. And uh, was a Jack Welsh coach, quote, quote from GE, and change before you have to, um, which means whether it's change your service level, add a little, add a little extra, make that rock salt story your story somewhere, or just even if we have to change like Netflix has changed, and through this pandemic come out with better use of all the tools and programs that we have, the value proposition that's offered to everybody. Uh, throughout the entire organization. Please take advantage of it and take advantage of the education in weeks to come. Uh, it was, Joe, you know, I, 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 you probably saw the comments, but there's some great comments that I just want to share that, um, um, that, that, are, that are out there. Um, so much energy and information from Tessa Carroll. I could listen for hours from Sonia Halstead. Uh, Joe is a super great speaker from Joseph Klein. Great presentation, Margaret Dobbs. Um, and uh, just uh, incredible, incredible quotes from many, many people, even, even they're running you for president now, Joe, a couple people, but, but that's out of Lakewood, Ohio. So they're, they're trying to run anybody for president. So um, anyhow, um, don't forget you can get the book. The book's a gift that you go to joerand.com uh, backslash free, and then you click on the book that you want to choose. Uh, Joe's other book is uh, Disruptors, Discounters, and Doubters, written a few years ago. Um, when you look at the, the world that we're in today uh, and so many people coming in to try to think they're discounting our fee, disrupting our business, I'd suggest you get that book too. You read it. Um, it's one of the best real estate books I've read that really shows that you, the real estate agent, the employee, the, the mortgage originator, the title professional, the property manager, the commercial broker, all the disruption that wants to come out there, you make the difference in the service you provide, in creating the wow, in being a green or red penguin. Um, so don't be afraid to get that book too if you'd like and uh, you come away with a message. So finally, this has been a great day. I appreciate everybody putting up with some of the uh, technical difficulties that we had with Zoom. I will say this, you can watch this whole presentation in its entirety. We'll also splice it out that you can watch bits and pieces. 
if you missed any of it, uh, this afternoon, Kate Lasore will send out an, a link to where you can find it. I've even suggested that we could air it in its entirety like a recorded TV show, somewhere between four and six, and then you could decide to Zoom me later for a cocktail because, quite honestly, this has been enough stress this morning on making all the technical stuff work. So, again, we wish we could be with all of you, the whole Hannah family, every member of our leadership, the Rand family, Pat Riley, the Tate family. Thank you to everybody who put effort in today. Thank you for everybody who's worked so hard for the last year to make 2020 so special. And let's finish that first fourth quarter strong. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your day.